What's up guys, it's Jordan back with another e-commerce video. In this video we're going to be talking about the methods that I've been using with Facebook advertising to help get my business to the level that it's at today and how you can start using those methods yourself. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So in my last video I talked about the power of Facebook ads and I even showed you guys some of the numbers on how fast my business has been able to grow just using Facebook advertising. So like I said, I wanna go over some of the methods and uh, the tactics that I use to generate this level of sales. So just to touch on my Facebook ads journey again, you can see in my first month, uh, I spent less than $300 just to make nothing. I made like two sales and I made no money. I actually lost a good amount of money. When you don't have that much money, it kind of hurts. Uh, the next month I was able to get a little bit more money to invest into the advertising side of things and put a little bit more money into it. And actually, it appears that I was profitable in this period, but after fulfillment costs, this was not the case and I lost money this month as well. Now, if you take it to August, I spent around 3,000 to make 9,000. This was the first profitable month and it was a pretty happy moment because you can see that since then, I've been able to continue scaling and stay profitable. And last month we spent 33,000 to make a decent amount, but I don't feel comfortable sharing my revenue screenshots on here for the month, just for personal reasons. Now, on to the next one. So bad Facebook ad practices to follow. Um, first, I'm gonna talk about all these more in detail as this video goes on, so I just wanna touch on them briefly for now. Targeting with small audiences, uh, less than 1 million is typically not the best approach when you're selling e-commerce products through Facebook ads, and I'm gonna talk about this more in the future. Broad is better. Stealing your competitors' videos, copies, or product description, that's pretty self-explanatory. Not only is it unethical, but it is lazy, and if you do this and you're not getting sales, that's on you. Uh, also, using other objectives other than website conversions to test products. Now, I'm not going to say this is a really bad Facebook ad practice because a lot of people do have success with other objectives. Me personally and a lot of my friends find it a lot better to use conversion to test as it makes scaling much easier and maintainable. So, as for an example of a successful ad, I mean, ideally you want to look for stuff that has tons of likes and lots of comments and, and recent comments. You can see this one has comments from yesterday. This is actually one of my successful ads that I've launched. It's got almost 2 million views. It's got a lot of likes and that's an ad that's done over six figures in sales. And another one, just as an example, is this Lux Tech, uh, very popular e-commerce store, just selling this uh, blender. This is a good ad and I wanted to show this just so you guys can see what a good advertisement looks like. quality advertisement and we're going to talk more about why this is a quality advertisement and how you can make one yourself. <clears throat> so first I want to talk about my product testing method. I know I mentioned this on my Facebook and a lot of people seem to be interested about it so I'll just jump right into it. First, like I said, you have to figure out something to sell. Okay, so right off the bat I'm going to let you know that I will be making a more detailed product research guide down the line. For now though, I feel like this should be enough for you if you're just getting started to maybe find that first product that might get you a couple of sales. So you should find something that is already working. First and foremost, especially if you're just starting out. And the reason for this is that when you have no experience with marketing or e-commerce, it's going to be very difficult for you to take a product that nobody else has been able to sell before and magically make it sell. So when you're first getting started out or even after you've already been established, you should find something that's already working. I sorted these um, by dollar sign, so three dollar sign being the most and it's going to go down two to one. But I would say the most valuable products that I've ever found show up on my Facebook timeline just randomly in my news feed as an ad. Um, you want to check the date on the most recent comments to see if people are still um, active on this post because this means that that company is still running ads to that post and they're probably still making money from it. Another good method to finding products is looking for high selling products on Amazon or AliExpress. This is a good method, but you have to keep in mind that just because it sells there doesn't mean that it will sell on your Facebook advertisement. Now, once you get better with creating advertisements, you may be able to make 
a lot of products uh, go from not getting any sales to getting sales but when you're just getting started out it might be tougher for you to do that lastly you could use a site like ecom hunt that finds products that others have had success with and while I think this is a good method you are in direct competition with everybody else who's on that website posting the same products so you have to be very creative to stand out and have any chance of survival with the products on that website. That being said, there's potential and you could use that site to find your next winning product if you're creative enough. One of my friends, Soham, said this a long time ago and it was a turning point in my business. Simply, he said, you don't have to reinvent the wheel and it makes so much sense with this business that we're in. Uh, the people who drop ship products from AliExpress or just drop ship products from China in general the goal is to find trending products, okay? So once you've found something that's trending, you have no need to find something else because you can hop on that trend and get whatever money that you can from that. So you don't need to find this new gem or this new hidden item that's gonna make just money for you. You can find something that's already working for somebody else and figure out how to make it work for you. And I'm gonna talk about how to do that right now. So how can you overtake your competition or dominate your competition? First, once you've found a winning ad and a winning product that you think you want on your store, you need to you need to study your competitor's funnel heavily. And what I mean by that is going through their ad, watching their ad all the way through, and being nitpicky about it. Picking out things in the copy, things in the video. Once you do that, you need to go to the landing page, and you need to look at the product description, the images. Essentially, you want to look at everything that you can about this person or this company, and... Um, see what they're doing right and see what they're doing wrong okay once you figured out what they're doing right and wrong then you can take that knowledge and apply it to your own store so ideally you're just adding value on what they're doing so if they're let's say they have really low quality product images if you can find higher quality images and make your landing page look better than yours a customer is much more likely to buy from you so sure they may have seen the competitors ad in their timeline but they might see yours tomorrow and feel that your site was more trustworthy than theirs and actually give you their money. Now I know that might seem kind of confusing, but it's really not. Basically, all that you need to do is one up your competitor. Better ad creative, ad copy, product description, pretty much everything I just said. And just to touch on what I said about bad Facebook ads practice, don't copy anything directly. There, there cannot be anything lazier that I, that I have ever seen you, you really need to think of this as your own legitimate business. You don't start a brick and mortar business and then go and copy the guy next door word for word. You don't take his, his price tags and his item names. No, you create your own. With an online business, it's the exact same thing. Just because it's easier to steal doesn't mean that you should, and it's going to hurt you in the long run. Always improve on what you can. That's all I'm trying to say. And I feel like a lot of you will get a lot of value out of doing that because I know there's many people who just copy descriptions from AliExpress or copy them from Amazon and yes that can work but you will be surprised at the difference it makes when you really put time towards your business and becoming unique that's just how I feel about it so the checklist before launching an ad goes as follows you wanna like I said make sure you have a really clean and trustworthy landing page uh, trust badges for sure just those, those pictures that say uh, PayPal certified and McAfee security and you can find them on Google, just Google Shopify trust badges. Put those in your product description first and foremost or at the very bottom. It makes a big difference and it makes your customer trust your store a lot more. Proper grammar is a big one too. I notice a lot of stores with product descriptions that just look like gibberish and they're really hard to read. No customer is going to trust you. Not no customer, but a lot of customers aren't going to trust your store because of that reason. Make sure that your site has well-written descriptions and they are with proper grammar. You also want to use high-quality images as well. I know this can be hard when you don't have the product on hand to take pictures, but if you search enough on the internet, you should be able to find images for any product. I mean, people order the product and take pictures on Amazon, etc. So you can find images, trust me. Like I said, well-written and thought-out descriptions. I don't have to go into detail on this anymore. I hope by now you guys understand what I'm talking about and understand the point that I'm trying to make with that. If you wouldn't buy from the site, it's, it's probably not good enough. I mean, I'm not saying 
you should like really want to buy something from your store. But what I mean is when you're looking at your landing page after you finished it, you should look at it and be satisfied and say, okay, this is a good landing page. I'm ready to launch this. It shouldn't just be, oh, found a product, do, 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 fill it in, throw it up, put it on my store. No, take the time, make it look right. And the money will follow. Don't think about the money. Think about adding value and thinking about creating something that people will actually want to spend money on. That's how I feel. Also, put together your own ad creative. Uh, same with the copy. Don't, co don't, don't copy your competitor. There's a couple reasons for this. The main one for me is that if you copy, there's a chance people will be blind to your ad. A lot of people like to use the same exact creative as their competitor. And I understand why, because it's really easy. You just download it and you do it. But the thing is, if you guys are targeting the same audience, a lot of people have probably already seen the other person's ad and did one of two things, kept scrolling or they bought the item. If they already bought the item, they're not gonna buy it again. And if they kept scrolling, they weren't interested. So what would be the solution? Make a new ad that people will be interested in. I mean, it's sort of self-explanatory, but a lot of people miss that fact that there's a high chance, if you're in direct competition with someone, there's a high chance that your customers are going to see the same ad and you, you want to stand out, you know. If the product needs demonstration, use a video. I would say use a video 90% of the time. Most products do need demonstration or just work better with demonstration. As for making the video, okay, you could order the product yourself and take a video, which is tough, and I recommend you do that. But if you don't have access to doing that, I suggest going on YouTube and finding clips of people using the product or people just demonstrating the product, nobody selling the product or anything, just people using the product, and then take clips from those videos and chop them up. Take a 10 second clip here, five second clip here, 10 second clip here, and put it all together, and then give credit to the, the people who made that video. That way, you're in the clear. And if anybody ever tries to come back at you, nobody's gonna sue you or anything. You just take down the video and that's that. And this has worked really well for me and I know it's worked good for a lot of other people too, so making videos isn't hard, you just have to put the time towards doing it. Photo works well too, just depends on the product I guess. Um, I recommend video, all my winning ads have been video ads, but I actually have a winning ad right now, it's a photo ad, so I'm not just creating photos completely, but if you can make a video, I think you should. So let's talk about the structure of your ad creative. How should it look, how should it feel? I'm not gonna go into this uh, fully, like with video editing tips and stuff, but I'm just gonna go over the basics of what's been working for me. So there's more than one way to set up your ad, okay? Th there's not one method to follow, and what I'm about to show you shouldn't be the only thing that you do from the future. You, you should try it, and if it works for you, cool. If not, test some other stuff. I, I mean, I, I can't predict the future, and I can't promise that this is gonna work for you, it just works for me. Uh, notice that it's called ad creative. Be creative. You don't have to copy. That's lazy. <laughs> Whoops. So square videos, um, or you can use the vertical mobile resolution. It's a little bit harder to make videos in this resolution. You can film them on your phone. What I mean by vertical is like the dimension of the phone. You can upload a video in that format and it'll fill up the whole screen. These work really well. If you have an access, if you have access to making this or you want to make this, I highly recommend trying it. You should also use a thumbnail on your ad creative. This makes a huge difference. I believe that you would be surprised if you tried it yourself. The click through rate on the video has doubled when I've tried using thumbnails, and it's really easy to make the thumbnail. Just take a screenshot from the video and just put a little black bar on the top and put some text that says, this product's really cooler. You have to see this. Just something, excuse me, something that is enticing and gets people interested. So you want to put captions across the bottom. Uh, here's an example right here. Basically, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory with the captions. These, these are what is selling the product to your customer. Okay, so you can put, uh, I was going to say you can put whatever you want here. Don't put whatever you want here. Put the selling points of your product. So whatever you have on your product description, such as the benefits of the product, the features of the product, you wanna put this in this captions area, so that way your customer may be more likely to make a purchase. If you're just showing a photo of the ad, they're gonna look, make a judgment call, and either move on or buy it. But if you're selling them, they might th th something might click for them, and they might say, oh, I need this. Boom, they give you your money, and it works. 
same thing, like I said, talk about the important features, the benefits. Also, this doesn't really matter. This is just personal preference, but I always like to use white text if it's on a black background, just because it's easy on the eyes and you don't want your customer to struggle with reading your advertisement or get their eyes irritated from looking at it, especially if they're looking at it in the dark. So that's just a little thing. And you want to use like louder colors to highlight important points. Yellow is a good one. Blue is a good one. Once again, these are things that matter just a little bit, but it's just personal preference and I felt like sharing. So the ad copy structure. Once again, there are many ways to set up your copy. Don't just do what I'm saying. I'm suggesting something that's worked for me and worked for other people and you can use it, but know that there are other ways to do it and that's okay. You want it to be easy to read. That's self-explanatory. When they're scrolling down the feed, you don't want them to struggle to read it. And usually the way that I do this is by spacing it out. So I'll put one line, do a space, put one line, do another space. And that way it's just, it's right in front of your face. You can read the way that it's set up and I'll show you right here. You also want to use emojis to grab attention. Basically, when people are scrolling down the news feed, it's really easy to just scroll right past something. You want to grab your customer's attention and make them stop and watch your video. Surprisingly, emojis are a good way to do this. I couldn't explain to you the science behind it, but it works. Trust me, try it. Here's a sample format. This is a format that I've used in the past and still use sometimes to this day. So you basically want to put a headline, the offer, and a call to action. Headline, pretty self-explanatory. You want to talk about the product. This product is awesome. You need this product. Whatever the headline may be, something short, concise, that grabs their attention. Then you want to give them an offer. You can say, this week only, get free shipping. Or you can say, 50% off at this link. Or Black Friday, whatever your offer may be. You want to make sure to include that in your ad because that's something that may entice the customer to come to your store and purchase. And lastly, you want to end on the call to action. And what I mean by call to action is just saying, get yours here, buy it now. That last little push that your customer needs, you want to make sure you have that in your ad to get them to take that last step. And here's an example, um, just something I typed up real quick in notes. You see I've got emojis on both sides, I've got the offer, I've got the call to action. That, that format should work. Uh, it's, it's simple enough to where you could apply it to any product and it should work. So I would definitely suggest giving that a try. So once you've got your ad created and you've got the copy all sorted out, you've got the landing page all set up, now it's time to figure out who's going to buy this or who you're going to target this um, product to. So I'm going to go over that now and talk about the way to set up your campaigns as well to stay organized with your ads. So first I want to talk about campaign structure. You want to separate each product by campaign. To my friends with experience, this is a given, but to those just starting out, this might be a good tip. When I, I know when I first started out, I would make one campaign and put all my products in that campaign. That is messy and really hard to keep up with. One product, one campaign. Well, you can have multiple campaigns for one product if you're doing retargeting, but that's another topic. Um, this will make it much more organized and easy to follow, just like I said. You want to optimize for uh, website conversion purchase 99% of the time. If you're just first starting out, you should optimize for add to cart, maybe, but I've had success with new stores, just optimizing for purchase out of the gate. My roommate, he's up to $500 a day on a brand new Pixel, and he optimizes for purchase on every single campaign. So that's my suggestion. Do whatever you want with optimization, but I say go for purchase every single time. And a lot of gurus might tell you something different, but that's what I said. The main reason for this is that the goal is to get sales. So that's the objective that we should be optimizing for. If I'm making a post and I want to get a bunch of likes and comments and shares, then my objective is engagement. So I'm going to run a post or page post engagement ad. But in this case, our objective is to get sales. So it'd be foolish not to run a website purchase campaign. The main use PPE has for me and the way that I use it is to help boost an ad that you believe has potential or is already doing well, but you want to give it that extra kick. Social proof does help. This is undeniable, but I think if you're going to use PPE, you should be running a conversion campaign alongside it as well. You want to separate your audiences by ad set. Now, this is once again pretty self-explanatory, but to those just starting out, you never know. So I feel like including that. 
uh, make sure you're using the Facebook feeds placement. You can definitely use other placements, and I encourage you using other placements. But Facebook feeds is traditional, and it works relatively well, and it's not that confusing to keep track of. If you want to use other placements like Instagram or um, excuse me, Messenger, you can do that just fine. But I would suggest you break those up by ad set. So you have one ad set targeting one audience that's going to the Facebook feeds. Then you have another ad set targeting the same audience that's going to Instagram. That way you can gauge the stats equally and figure out which one's doing better. Uh, a lot of people ask one day click conversion window or seven day click conversion window. Quite frankly, I think it depends on the ad account, but I also think that it doesn't really matter that much. If you think about it, the person's gonna buy your product regardless. This just comes down to an optimization question. So if you're not if you're not getting sales, it's not because of your conversion window or whatever. You're not getting sales because nobody wants to buy your product or you're targeting the product to the wrong people. But if you want a suggestion, I would say use one day. And the one reason why is because you want your customer to come and buy in the same day. That's what it's saying. It's a conversion window. What's the window of time that you think a customer will complete a conversion on your store? Maybe if you're selling a $500 item, you would want to do seven day click. Because you, the customer will come to your store, you retarget them, eventually they convert, there you go. But in most cases, if you're selling a product under $100, you would like your customer to convert in the same day. Split test one day and seven day for the same reason that I just said. You never know what's going to work for you, but I always suggest one day, and one day has worked for me since the start. So targeting. This one is, there's, there's no real... Uh, right answer for targeting, okay? But I've spent over a hundred thousand dollars on Facebook ads and I have a lot of data backing what I'm about to say and I have a lot of money that I've lost doing other methods. So this in my opinion is one of the best methods for targeting for e-commerce and it's worked for me and a lot of other people. So targeting has changed significantly uh, due to changes in Facebook's algorithm uh, the focus before with e-commerce was laser targeting with 250k audience size, maybe max 700k, and this used to work really well. I know Nick Peroni teaches this method a lot, and it still works, I guess. But uh, you're better off you're better off going going broad because targeting with extremely narrowed interest is going to limit who's going to see your ad. Which on paper it, 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 that sounds like a good a good thing, you know what I mean? But the truth of the matter is Facebook has nearly endless amounts of data and is searching for conversions when you're optimizing for this purchase campaigns. Therefore, you should be using the audience that has a larger pool of people for Facebook to pull from. Now, I don't fully understand all of the technicals behind Facebook ads, but I think I've got an okay understanding of this one. And just off of my data and experience alone, Targeting Broad has worked significantly better. For the main reason that you're going to see cheaper metrics across the board. So you're going to be getting double the people to your store. You're going to be having who knows how many extra people just seeing your ad in general. Uh, my CPMs, which is your cost per uh, thousand impressions, my CPM, if you compare it from worldwide to US or Eastern countries, it's night and day. My CPM usually worldwide is less than $3. When I target US, my CPM is anywhere from eight to twenty dollars, which is relatively high if you compare it to the worldwide one. So finding your audience. Now uh, this just goes back to what I was saying. You want to target your broad. So to achieve this broad targeting that I'm speaking about, typically you're only going to want to use one to two interests per ad set. I would say on most of the ads that I launch, I only use one interest. The only time I use two interests is if maybe I want to bundle some things together. So let's say I want to bundle some hardware stores together and I want to have an audience of people who look like, like hardware stores. So I'll put Ace Hardware, Home Depot, Lowe's. That'll be the whole, that'll be the whole thing. I'm not going to continue and try to find all these little mom and pop stores. No. That audience alone should probably be above 5 million and that's a good audience to work with. Just like I said, you want to look for the incredibly broad interest. Example, if you're selling a blender, you would want to target health and fitness, smoothies, blender fruit now you might look at that and be like no that's that's so that's so simple uh, it's got to be more complicated than that I need to target all this crazy stuff but that's not the case I 
you 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 should be able to find success if your ad is good and everything is set up properly. You should be able to find success targeting these broad interests because a lot of people are going to see your ad. A lot of people. You should be able to get a few buyers from that pool of people. And if not, something's wrong with your funnel or your product. So once you find one or two of the interests as you're building your audience, what you can do is you can use the Facebook suggestions tool. And I know you guys have seen it before. Just when you're typing in an interest, there's that little button that says suggestions. Hit that button and you are going to get a whole list of interests that are directly related to what you just typed in. I don't use the audience insight tool anymore. When I was first starting out, I was using it. I find this suggestions tool to be significantly better in finding me winning audiences. For broad products too, don't be afraid to try no interest targeting. It, it's That sounds really crazy, but to be honest, my one of my highest performing ad sets right now is an ad set with no interest on it. it I'm just targeting to a broad audience of everybody in the world. Now, this might be harder for you if you're just starting out with a not so seasoned pixel without that many conversions on it, but it really, it's not gonna deter you too much. Like I said, I have my roommate who started his own e-commerce store recently and he uses no interest targeting as well and it's worked for him. So I hear there's too many excuses, I feel like. People say, oh, my pixel isn't seasoned, I can't get sales, I'm using the wrong conversion window. Way too many excuses when the reality is it's not that. The, you're either targeting the wrong people, your product is not a good one, or there's something wrong with your funnel. That's it. That is the only reason why you wouldn't be getting sales. Granted, every now and then Facebook may have some issues with the traffic, but for the most part, it's not Facebook, it's you. So, sorry for the rant. Just had to get that off my chest because it's the truth and a lot of people fail to realize that. Uh, you want your audience size to be around or over, well over 1 million if you can. 1 million being the minimum. I typically don't launch anything under 1 million unless of course it's a lookalike audience or a custom audience retargeting campaign. Definitely want to be using worldwide to test. Some people say you shouldn't do this because you get a lot of fraud orders and stuff. Mm, I don't. I used to I, and I still do get fraud orders every now and then but they're not as common as you think and it's not as big as a problem a big as a problem as you expect it to be. Every now and then you'll get an order that's like $800 and it might get you really excited but deep down like you know it's a fraud order so you just refund it and and that's that so test worldwide you'll get cheaper conversions you'll have bigger audience sizes to work with and scaling will be much easier you can scale with worldwide sometimes but if possible I always try to narrow it down to the big four countries when I scale and the only reason that I do this is for shipping purposes if you've ever tried to ship to some of these countries like Gibraltar or Malta or something it takes it's five to eight weeks and even if you're really clear with this uh, about this on your store your customer is still gonna get very pissed off usually and then you have to deal with a frustrated customer which is which is never fun so I always eventually try to narrow it down if possible but if not it's okay you just have to be good at customer service or figure out a better way to get that product to your customer quicker so test with worldwide scale with worldwide if you want to and if you can narrow down, try to narrow down. But this should be enough to get some ad sets going that will bring you some sales. This part right here. So uh, once you've got some audiences picked out, uh, there's two methods that I like to use regarding budget. Um, the first being the low budget method. You're going to want to do $5 daily budget per ad set. And with this, you can launch three to five audiences and I mean obviously you can do much more than that but in this low budget method this is the area I would stick with that way you're not spending too much money the only reason I would ever use this method is if you're just getting started out and you're looking to get a little bit of traction get your first couple of sales keep in mind this is going to work really well but my next method is for the people with a little bit more money who want to get some faster results and actually see things start coming in a little bit quicker um, this is high budget or aggressive testing. Um, you want to do twenty to forty dollars daily budget per ad set, and this is when you're testing. Um, and you want to launch ten to fifteen audiences. Now I know that sounds a little ridiculous, and 
kind of like overkill, but if you consider what I mentioned before, it's really not. So the method that I'm talking about is finding a product that already works and is already selling a lot, taking that product, improving upon that product's flaws, and then presenting it to the same group of people and seeing if they're interested in it. Now, using the low budget method, which does work, you're going to be limited to the amount of people that may potentially see your ad. When you're only picking three to five audiences or only working with three to five audiences, you never know. That sixth audience that you didn't launch, that could have been the one. That's why I like to do this high budget testing. I don't always launch $40 daily budget when I test. Actually, I rarely do. It's typically around the 20 range, but I put that $40 range for those people who really want to spend money and get quick results. And the big part of this is the amount of audiences that you launch. You want to launch at least 10 audiences. And this is what I've been doing for my tests. And in the past five product tests that I've launched, every single one of them has gotten a sale. Three of them have been scalable. And that was just this week. Next week, I'm going to continue testing products with this method. This works, okay? And you can do uh, the low budget method with more audiences. And that's what I did for a long time. And I still do sometimes. So $5 budget with 10 audiences in an ad set. That will work well. So what I would suggest to you is if you're going to follow the strategy that I'm going over, launch a lot of audiences, okay? You don't want to miss out. And don't be afraid to try something that might be a little unorthodox. Like I said, no interest or targeting just girls or targeting just men or whatever it may be. Try it, test it, see if it works. This is just what I said. With more audiences, you're more likely to find an audience interested in your product. Only targeting three to five limits you. And for those just starting out, and those with experience, $5 budget works perfectly fine. I still use $5 budgets all the time. You just have to be a little bit more patient before you can get results uh, regarding your scaling. So if you're using five and it's working, good. I use five for a long time and I still use five all the time. But if you can, use 20. You get results quicker and it's a faster process. Just a quick overview of what you should look for with winning metrics. First and foremost, over everything else, Look for sales and ROI. I see people that run their ads for so, 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 so long, even when the, the product has gotten no sales, just because it's got cheap link clicks or 20 ad to carts or whatever, but they're not making any money. And then at the end of the day, when their ad set has spent $50 and they've gotten no sales and they killed it, you, you just lost $50. So you should be getting sales pretty much in the first day or two. If, if not, it's, it's unlikely that you've got a winning product. It, it just is. I mean, there's no need to fall in love with any type of stats unless they're just out of this world. But if you're not getting sales, there's something wrong and you should probably adjust. This falls in the same token, <clears throat> ROAS, return on ad spend. This is basically uh, just Let's say you spend $5, you make $20, that would be a four times ROAS. It's, it's your return on your ad spend investment. Same exact reason as sales. That's what we're here for, to make, to make money. So focus on these things because these are the money statistics. Now, looking past those, there are other stats to look for. Um, a big one would be cost per, cost per link click. This is important because this is the amount of people that are coming to your store and how much it costs for you to get someone to your store. Um, ideally, you want this, I, I don't know why I put 150 you really want this to be under a dollar. If, if it's over a dollar, typically I find that the ad set doesn't do that good. It can still be a winning product with a CPC above a dollar, but if it's like 20 cents, you're going to be getting five times more people to your store. So it's pretty self-explanatory on why you want that to be cheaper. The CTR um, link click is essentially the percentage of people who clicked your link over the people who saw your ad. So uh, in this example I put here, 100 people see your ad, two people click on the ad, you have a 2% CTR. So the CTR you wanna look for is above 1.5%. Typically above 2% would be a good CTR. This is one of those things that I just kind of look at and you know, if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. But like I said, at the end of the day, I'll, I mainly focus on sales and, ROI, and ROAS. Because that's what matters. In the first couple months of me starting, I was 
falling in love with all these statistics and saying, oh, this this might be this might be the winning the winning ad set when it had no sales. It just had cheap link clicks and a high CTR. That stuff, it matters, but if you're trying to make money, it really doesn't matter that much if you're not getting any sales. Also, when targeting worldwide, like I said, you'll have cheaper um, metrics across the board, but also, since your ad is being shown to so many people, expect your CTR to be lower. As a matter of fact, if you're targeting worldwide, pay attention to your CTR, but don't let it like crush your spirits or anything if it's really low. I, I'm, on one of my winning ad sets currently, the CTR is like point. Four, but that's just because I have a CPM of less than a dollar. So a lot of people are seeing um, my ad consistently. Not everybody's clicking, but a lot of people are clicking and it's working well. So when you're targeting worldwide, pay less attention to the CTR. But if it's really good on worldwide, you got something. <laughs> um, and here's some results with this exact method. Uh, if you have me on Facebook, you saw this. This is a product that I woke up, I launched the product, I got ready, I headed out to the gym. And ching, 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 ching. I got four sales while I'm at the gym, and I come back home to check the stats, and the stats were just ridiculous. 99 cent cost per purchase on that one, 109 cost per purchase on that one. I've, I've actually scaled this, uh, both of these ad sets now up to $300 budgets each, and they're chilling at a 3.5 ROAS, both of them. And I just had my highest sales day yesterday, pretty much off these two ad sets, and I just launched this product. And I'm not kidding, guys. Like. I was hesitant to drop this video because I, I just went over everything that I used to to get these these exact results. I didn't leave anything out. And if there's something that I did leave out that you want to know, leave a comment and I'll answer that question. I'm not going to share my website or share any of my products with you guys because if you know how this business works, that's not a smart thing to do. But uh, I'll try to answer anything I can. And yeah, here's another one too. Uh, I launched this on Monday. And this was the screenshot from Tuesday morning, or no, Wednesday morning. And as you can see, spent $43 to make 200, 4.75 ROAS. I mean, that's pretty solid. And I've scaled this one as well, which is also chilling at a 4 ROAS with a $100 budget. So, guys, maybe this might be complicated. Uh, I'm new to this, to this YouTube stuff and explaining things to people. But I'm trying to present this in a way that you can take it and apply it tomorrow in the next or apply it today in the next 10 minutes in the next couple of minutes I just want you guys to take what I what I'm trying to teach and, and really apply it to your story and see see the results because this stuff is really working right now what I just explained can be interpreted in so many different ways and and warped in so many different ways that you can use it yourself to create something really better you could get better stats than me you know so take what I said with a grain of salt no Take what I said and apply it, and let me know how it goes for you. Um, on one last note, this isn't about Facebook ads directly. This is more or less about the journey and the process of Facebook ads. You need to approach mastering Facebook ads as you would any other skill, any skill. And if you look at this uh, graph, I actually really like this. I was reading this book a couple months ago called Mastery, and it had this, this curve in here, and I found it on Google because I want to show you guys. A lot of people think that the amount of time you put into something directly is going to correlate with your skill level. So therefore, you spend a week working on something, you get better. You spend another week, you get better. While on paper this seems like how it works, it's not. What happens when you're trying to master something is that you're going to start out, and yeah, you are going to see some improvements at, at the start and along the way. But eventually, you're going to hit a point where you get stuck, and it gets hard. And likely, you're going to go back down to where, you, not all the way back to where you were before, but you're going to go back down. And after that, you may plateau for a little bit. But the thing is, if you're able to stick through moments like that and continue persevering, your next breakthrough will take you further than you were before. And this is so true with Facebook ads. You guys saw my stats at the beginning of this video. If, what if I would have quit in July when we lost money? I, what would I be still in college and still just going to class and whatever I, I wouldn't have this business where it's at and I didn't quit and you shouldn't quit either there's there's really if you're trying to master it there's no reason to quit it takes time it takes time to make time and I don't know if that makes sense but it made sense as I was writing it and I want to explain what I mean by that okay the ultimate goal with starting a business 
at least for me, is to have free time. Money's cool, but money isn't necessarily uh, the, the, the most valuable asset. Time. Time is the most valuable asset. I started this business so I could have free time. I didn't want to work a job for 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, whatever. I, I started this business because I want to be able to wake up whenever I want. I want to be able to do whatever I want during the day and spend a little bit of time getting some work done. Okay? And you know what it took to get to that point? Was time. A lot of freaking time. All summer, I gave up my whole summer to grow my business and learn what I can about Facebook ads. I didn't go out. I didn't party. I, I mean, I, I cut off like a lot of friends and a lot of stuff. And that's okay. I'm cool with everybody now and nothing. there's no bad blood or anything. But I took a lot of time out of my life to put into this. Okay? And guess what? Now, I can enjoy my days. And I can enjoy my free time. And I'm very happy to say that. It's possible for anybody to achieve the same exact thing too. You just need to be patient. There's no other way to put it. You need to work hard, you need to be determined, and you have to stay patient. If not, you don't really deserve to win. If you think it's going to happen overnight, and you think you're just going to put a week's worth of work in and magically be a millionaire, you don't deserve to have a million dollars, or any dollars to be honest. Money comes to you in correlation to the value that you provide to the earth. And if you're not providing any value, you don't get any money. Therefore, take the time to build something that you're proud of. Something that you know people will be excited to see. And, and, and ultimately something that you're confident with saying, this is mine and I'm happy that I've built this. Mindset plays a big part in it too. It's really easy to keep spending money on ads and keep spending money and say, oh, my life is over. I'm spending all my money on this and nothing's working and I'm such a failure. Yeah, it's really easy to do that. Our minds are always yelling at us and we're always in a constant battle with this thing up here. But if you think about it, you're never losing money with ads. Never. Now, if you look at it from the business standpoint, yes, your business may be losing money. But with every penny you spend on Facebook advertising, you're getting data back. Now, this data might suck. It, you might be getting no sales, you might be getting no link clicks, whatever. But guess what? You just paid to find out that your ad is shit, that your product is shit. Whatever it is, is not good. That's what you paid for. So now that you have that information, you can use that to adjust and to get better. You can't get mad that you've spent some money and lost the money. You need to understand that you spent the money and you've done something incorrectly. So now you can face the consequences of that, pivot, and continue to grow moving forward. Look at it as an investment in yourself and in your business, okay? You're getting data back. You're never losing money. Think of it like that, especially when you're first starting out. Now, when you're, when you're scaling and stuff, be responsible with your assets. Don't just go crazy just because you're buying a bunch of data. No, you can lose a lot of money. But when you're first starting out, know that you're really not losing money when you're testing these products. And lastly, I just want to end on the fact that the next product you launch could be the one that changes your life. Look, it sounds crazy, but a lot of these dudes doing 10K a day, 15K a day, whatever K a day, a lot of money, a lot of them are going off of one and one or two products, and that's all you need. Last month, we almost did six figures off of just one product, and now I got three winners going, and the sales are crazy. So look, don't stop testing just because your last product test failed, or... Don't stop testing because your last 20 product tests fail. That 21st product you launch, it could be the one. So look, all I'm trying to say is that you need to have confidence in yourself and understand that when you're approaching Facebook ads, you are developing a skill set and it's going to take time to learn. And I think once you get that in your mind and you understand that mindset, you'll find the journey to be much more enjoyable. And when you finally do win, it's going to be much, much, much more satisfying. I can assure you of that. <laughs> so, cool. You found something that works. Now what? How do you scale it? That's a good question. And we're going to answer that question in my next video that will be coming out sometime this week. I'm going to make a shorter guide to scaling your ad sets. I find scaling to be one of the easier parts of the e-commerce thing. Once you've found a product that's already worked, or once you've found a product that's working and an audience that's buying that product, congratulations. You've done 
60% of the work. That's the hard part. Scaling it isn't that tough. So we're going to talk about that in my next video, and I hope you guys are looking forward to that. So cool. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it if you stayed all the way to the end. If you could, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be making content just like this every week or so. That's that's my plan. I don't really have an upload schedule, but I'm trying to get on one. I think weekly is going to be the uh, verdict. Uh, turn on the notifications as well. That way, when I do upload a new video, you guys will know and you'll be able to be the first ones to watch it. And lastly, like this video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. Let me know. Tell me. And that'll help me improve for the future. So once again, I appreciate you guys sticking through this video. And if it helped you at any way at all, please reach out to me. Let me know. Okay? So once again, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.